Hello, glad you decided to join us again. Today we're going to talk about mesh analysis. And it's another ana technique for solving very efficiently, finding to find the uh, currents and then therefore voltages and powers and things that you need in basic electronic circuits. So before we get started, we need to introduce a little bit of vocabulary. So if you remember back to when we started, we defined what a path was. A path is a progression from point A to point B. And then a closed path, of course, is where the, the path begins and ends at the exact same location. Like when you go hiking and you park your car at the trailhead and you, you walk the closed path back to where you started from. So a closed path is when the points A and B, the starting and ending points, are the same. And maybe we didn't introduce it explicitly earlier, but we've said it several times al along the way, is that another name for a closed path is loop. So a loop is a closed path. So now for today, we're going to be doing mesh analysis, so we need to introduce what is a mesh. A mesh is a loop, but it's a loop that does not contain any s other smaller loops within it. So for instance, if we were to have a circuit, and I'm just going to kind of draw these quickly, and they're not really, the little squiggles are meant to min mean circuit elements. This is a loop obviously because there's a closed path and it's also a mesh because there is no smaller loop within it. But if you were to have a circuit that maybe looked more like this where each of these branches have some kind of circuit element in them so you have some big large complicated circuit that looks like this if you're saying, where are the loops, where are the closed paths, well, there's, I mean, dozens of them. You have a loop around each one of these, and you also have the loop around the outside, and you have a loop this way in an L shape, and there's just dozens and dozens of loops. But the mesh are the loops that do not contain any other smaller loops. And so for this red circuit beneath, we have one loop there, one there, one here, and there's actually nine mesh. Even though there may be dozens and dozens of loops, there's only nine mesh because each of these small loops do not contain any other loops within it. And that's what a mesh is. It's a loop that does not have any smaller loops within. So now that we know what a mesh is, we can introduce the new technique of mesh analysis. Mesh analysis is the dual of nodal analysis. Mesh analysis is a systematic application, in this case of, of KVL, to the circuit, to solve a circuit. And so remember, we can solve any circuit using our KVL, our KCL, or Ohm's Law, but those are just you know, random applications of those laws to a circuit may become very inefficient. You may never quite find all the relationships you want. So we need a recipe to find a, to do a systematic application to apply our relationships to our circuit so we can get to the answer as quickly as possible. And that's what mesh analysis is. So mesh analysis. The mesh analysis has four steps. The first step, determine the number of mesh in the circuit, and we'll call that number M. So find out how many mesh, that is loops that do not contain any smaller loops within, how many mesh are there in the circuit. Next, we need to define mesh currents, and actually there's a very important word here. All right, we need to make sure we define the mesh currents consistently, consistently, and I'll talk more about that in a minute when we do some examples. But the mesh currents must be defined, and they must be defined consistently for things to work out. Next, we have our M mesh currents been defined, so now we're going to write KVL around each of those mesh. So we'll get M, M KVL equations. And now we have a system of M equations and M unknowns, and we solve that, Kramer's rule, matrix inversion, back substitution, whatever, and when we do that, we will come up with the M mesh currents. And now we have all the mesh currents, and once we have all the mesh currents, we can define any current in the circuit that we're interested in, we can find any voltage we're interested in, we can find any powers we're interested in, energies, whatever. Once you have all the mesh currents, then it becomes quite simple to find anything you're looking for. I do want to point out one more thing with mesh analysis, and mesh is different from nodal. Nodal works, nodal analysis works on any circuit. Mesh only applies to planar circuits, so mesh will not work on every possible circuit. If it's a planar circuit, if it's a non-planar circuit, then mesh analysis will not work properly. And we don't run across those too terribly often, at least in an early discussion of circuits, but they may crop up in, in late, later courses that you take in, in electricity and electronics and computer engineering. Now, a 
So you need to watch out for that. Now what is a planar circuit? Well, a planar circuit is any circuit that you can draw on a piece of paper without the, uh, the ink coming up and out of the page, if you will. If it requires a third dimension in order to draw the circuit without, you know, shorting things out or doing things like that, then it's a non-planar circuit. So it has to be able to be drawn on a piece of paper uh, for it to be planar. All right, let's dive in and do an example. So the first example here is a simple circuit, and we'll use mesh analysis. And let's actually have it something to work toward. Let's find the power absorbed in the 3 ohm resistor. So the first step in mesh analysis is to determine how many mesh there are in the circuit. How many loops are there that don't contain any smaller loops? And so, as we saw in the previous slide, if it looks like a window pane, then each of the panes is a mesh. And so in this case, we see that we have, and I always like to write it up in the corner so I don't forget, we have M equals 2. And if you go back and look at the recipe in the previous slide, I expect to get two equations and two unknowns with mesh analysis. So, next, define each of the mesh currents, the two mesh currents consistently, all right? So this is what this is all about. So we're going to define a current that goes around this way, and I'm going to call this mesh current I1. And this will be the current in the second mesh, and we'll call it I2. And by consistently, notice that I've made both of my mesh currents go the same direction, in this case, clockwise. They need to be going the same directions. If you make the first mesh current clockwise, all of the mesh currents need to be clockwise. If you make the first one counterclockwise, they all need to be counterclockwise. I always use clockwise. That's just a habit of mine. Always make your mesh currents the exact same direction, the same way around the clock. If you don't, then things are not going to work out. So our mesh currents have been defined. Next step, write KVL for each of the mesh. So we'll do mesh one. So KVL. Mesh analysis is a systematic application of KVL, all right? And so we'll write KVL around the first mesh, starting in the bottom left corner, minus 42. And then I'm looking for, I'm adding up voltages, so I'm looking for the voltage plus to minus. And if I want the voltage plus to minus, then I see I1 is the current going to the right, so I see the voltage drop is going to be 6 I1. And then I'm looking for the voltage like this, with the plus on top across the 3 ohm resistor. And to do this, if I want to find the voltage with the plus on the top and the minus on the bottom, I'm looking for the current going down. Now, it's going to be 3 times that current. What is that current? Well, I see I have an I1 contribution, an I1 mesh currents going down. But also notice that the I2 current is counteracting that flow, and so the net flow, the net flow of current down is going to be I1 being counteracted by I3, the, excuse me, I2. The total current going down is going to be the I1 current, which is going down, but it's going to be counteracted by the I2 current, which is flowing against it. So the net flow downwards would be I1 minus I2. Now we've gotten back to where we started from and this equals zero. Now write KVL for mesh number two. So, and you can start anywhere, so we'll just start in the top and going around this direction. If I want the voltage plus on the left, minus on the right, I'm looking for the current going in this way, and so that's going to be 4. And what is the current going to the right? Well, it's I2. And then when I get to the voltage source, simply minus 10. And then at this point, I am at the 3 ohm resistor, and I'm looking for the voltage plus to minus. All right. And then I know it's going to be 3 ohms, and I'm looking for the current going up because I want to have the passive sign convention satisfied. And what is the current that goes up? Well, I have an I2 component that goes up, and it's being counteracted by a flow in the opposite direction of I1. And so when I've done that one, I'm back to where I started from, and that equals 0. So now I have a system of two equations and two unknowns as predicted by our recipe. And you can clean this up. to get a simpler a system of equations that looks more familiar. And if you were to solve the system of equation, Kramer's rule, back substitution, matrix inversion, whatever is your most your favorite method, you'll find I1 equals 6 amps. 
and you'll get I2 equals 4 amps. And the question was, we were asked to find the power absorbed by the 3 ohm resistor. So remember, the power absorbed by a resistor is V times I, or you can also write it as I squared R. So what is the current in the 3 ohm resistor? And I'm looking for the power absorbed, so it doesn't really matter. I just need to find the current. The current in the 3 ohm resistor is either going to be I1 minus I2. That will be the current going down squared times R. All right. So in this case, that it's going to be 6 amps minus 6 minus 4 quantity squared times 3. So it's 2 squared, 4 would be 12 watts. Or if you did it the other way, it should be the same thing. If you have 4 minus 6 quantity squared times 3, you'll also get a 12 watts. And so the answer to the question is, what is the power absorbed by the 3 ohm resistor? And the answer is simply 12 watts. So when you do mesh analysis, you find the mesh currents. And then if you are looking for a current, a current that flows in a branch that is common to two mesh like this one, you can find out what that current is by simply taking the, uh, the, the appropriate difference between the mesh currents. This is either this will, the one going down is I1 minus I2, and then the current that flows up will be I2 minus I1, so depending on which v current you want. All right, let's do another example. So here you have a little bit more complicated circuit, and we'd like to find the power absorbed by the 6 volt source. So let's dive in. Mesh analysis, first step. Determine the number of mesh in the circuit. And if you look at that and you look like a window pane, then you see there are three panes, so M equals 3. Step 2, define the M mesh currents consistently. And so we'll define a current, I1. We'll define this current as I2. And then we can define this current, I2. Three and notice that they are consistent. I have drawn all of my currents in the same directions. They're all clockwise, so everything's going to work out. Step three: write the KVL equation for the three mesh. So we'll begin and write KVL for mesh one. Begin in the bottom left, minus seven plus. So I'm looking for the voltage like this plus to minus plus on top, and so I know that's going to be 1 ohm times the current which is flowing down, and the current which is flowing down is I1, and it's being counteracted by the mesh current I2. And then I come to the voltage source, and it's plus 6, and then I'm looking for the voltage across the 2 ohm resistor with the plus on top. It's going to be 2 times the current in the 2 ohm resistor, so I'm looking for the current flowing down, and it's I1 minus I3. And after doing that, I'm back where I started from, equals zero. Next, KVL for mesh two. So we can start here on the two ohm resistor. I know that's going to be two, and the current flowing down in the two ohm resistor is simply I2. Then I'm looking for the voltage plus to minus across the three ohm resistor with the plus in the left, which means the plus in the right, excuse me, and I'm looking for the current which is flowing to the left, and that will simply be I2 counteracted by I3. And then I'm looking for the voltage plus to minus plus in the bottom of the 1 ohm resistor, and that current flowing in, flowing upwards is simply going to be I2 minus I1 equals 0. And then lastly, we are looking to write KVL around node 3, right, and starting here. The current going down is going to be simply I3, and then I'm looking for the voltage plus to minus, plus in the bottom of the 2 ohm resistor, 2 ohms, and the current going up is I3 minus I1, and then I get a minus 6, and then plus to minus, I see I need a the current in the 3 ohm resistor, and that's going to be I3 minus I2 equals 0. And now we have 
three equations and three unknowns, and you can clean that up and solve. And before you solve, you may want to do just like we did in nodal and go back and do some checking real quick to make sure things are, are looking good. If you look at the 1 ohm resistor, the 1 ohm resistor belongs to both mesh 1 and mesh 2, which means the contribution, the voltage across the 1 ohm resistor will appear in both equations. So let's go check that out real quick. So the 1 ohm resistor in the KVL1 equation is right here, and it's I1 minus I2, and then in the KVL2 equation, we see it is simply I2 minus I1. And those two, those two terms are negatives of each other, and that's what we expect because when we did the, when we did, uh, the polarity markings, we see that the pluses, or that the polarities got reversed, and so they should be negatives of each other. And then we see the 3 ohm resistor is common to 2 and 3, and so we see 3 times I2 minus I3, and here we see 3 I3 minus I2, which are negatives of each other, as they should be. And then the 6 volt source is in two equations, and we see a plus 6 here, and we see a minus 6 there. And then the 2 ohm resistor is in two equations, and we see 2 I1 minus I3 and 2 I3 minus I2. And so we see those terms appear in two places, and they indeed are negatives of each other, all as they should be, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. And then also look, because the way I draw my, because I draw my current, my mesh currents, I draw my mesh currents clockwise, and I proceed around my loops clockwise, my equations always kind of have the same form. If I'm doing the KVL1 equation, the I1 currents always come first. In the KVL2 equations, the I2 currents come first. KVL3, the I3 currents come first. And that's because I am progressing around the loop clockwise when I also uh, drew my mesh currents clockwise. And that's just kind of a way I always do it. And that's something I'm always looking for in my methods. Uh, to help me keep things straight. Now you could go around the loops in other directions if you want, but and that won't be true anymore. So I always take any opportunity you can to make things as consistent as possible. So now, if you take the equation, these three equations and three unknowns and solve and do it whatever method is your favorite, you'll find I1 is 3 amps, you'll get I2 is 2 amperes, and then you'll find I3 is also 3 amperes. And so whatever method that you like, you should get those as your answers. All right, so review mesh analysis. Mesh analysis is a systematic application of KVL in order to solve the circuits. So how do we perform mesh analysis? First step, find the number of mesh in the circuit. We'll call that M. Then for those M mesh, to find those M mesh currents and do it consistently. Each of the currents must be drawn the same direction for things to work out. Next step, for each of those M mesh, write KVL. Now you're going to have M equations and M unknowns. Those M unknowns are the mesh currents, and so solve the system of equations to find the mesh currents. Once you have those M mesh currents, you can find any other current in the circuit, then you can find any voltage, and then you can find any power. And there is one last thing to point out. Mesh analysis only applies to planar circuits. If the circuit cannot be drawn on a f drawn flat on a piece of paper, then mesh analysis does not work properly. So that's one little thing to watch out for. When in doubt, use nodal analysis because nodal always works. Well, thanks for visiting with us. We'll we'll do mesh analysis again next time and we'll look at some more complicated circuits.